Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're listening to this, this video, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm your play-by-play -play announcer, Lefty O'Gain, and this is the Lenwood Community Church Video Outreach. And, uh, you know, I encourage you after you go to church and after you listen to your video sermons to uh, check ours out at lenwoodcc.org. Pastor Dave will either have you smiling or crying, no in between. And Les is going through his Bible study on, on David right now, and uh, that's an enjoyable thing to listen to. So um, before we get going, let me, let me just pray real quick. Lord, we just thank you today for another day. Uh, my friends always used to tell me, hey, it's a great day when you can see your toes. So toes up, and a uh, nice great day in the desert. It just, it's a little bit above 32 and uh, that's okay. You know what, Lord, just to be able to serve you and to enjoy sharing your word and sharing stories is a blessing. So I ask you to open hearts and minds today and in, in this message, we ask it in your name. Amen. Well, for the last couple of weeks, you probably noticed that uh, Les, Pate, and I have worn this sweatshirt. The sweatshirt has... Uh, a verse on it, and it's a famous verse. You see it uh, in a lot of gift stores, and it's uh, inspirational. And it's uh, Isaiah forty thirty one right here on my chest, and it's just saying, you know what, Isaiah forty thirty one. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength; they shall mount on wings of eagles; they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And everybody takes that and. Has a little bit different interpretation for it, but uh, we decided to make this our uniform. So this is our video uniform, Les and I, and uh, and Pastor will sometimes do that behind the scenes. You won't get to see him because he's videotaping. But you know what? In this passage, um, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, is speaking to the Israelites and. Um, He's reminding them who God is, and they've just been in exile for 70 years. And I want to read uh, the previous three verses because then it'll make the last verse that we just read. Uh, it makes sense. And so I'm looking at uh, Isaiah 40, uh, chapter 40, verse 28. And this is the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. He is understanding, his understanding is unreachable, unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall, shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Well, I think that's a beautiful passage. What it's talking about is basically it's telling the Israelites, as he would be telling us, that uh, when you have Issues. Now, they were despondent. They just came out of exile. And they probably lost trust. They lost faith. They lost, they felt uh, despondent. They were down. And they felt like God left them, left them alone. Um, and that's what that verse is saying. It's anybody who, who is down, who needs to reach out, who needs to trust. God didn't leave them. God is God. God is the one that is unsearchable uh, and, you know and they and they didn't understand it at that time but here's Isaiah telling them he's God he created everything 
And all you need to do is rest on him. Take your worries to him. Trust him. When you're tired and you can't make it, you lean on his shoulders. And that's what that verse is talking about. Um, going back to this verse and going back to my uniform, uniforms are worn for various reasons. Some are worn for a symbol of pride, like a soldier. You know, I, I always see in the, in the movies, uh, I remember Clint Eastwood and Heartbreak Ridge came into one of the, the uh, reception things at the officer's club, and he's dressed in his, his nice, all his medals, you know, very proud, very good-looking uniform. All, all the different branches of the service, they wore their uniforms with pride. And um, that was a, a, a reason for wearing a uniform. The same with other, other groups. Um, boys, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, they wore their little beanies and their blue shirts with all their pins, and they wore that with pride. And you could recognize a Boy Scout by their uniform. Sports teams, I don't understand why but you see when you see a, a football game on tv you see people wearing different jersey numbers different that was, that's how they recognize their sports teams and that's how teams are recognized by people uh, but also with that uniform in most sports a lot of sports comes protective gear and the protective gear is, is a requirement added uh, to the identification of that team. And uniforms are so popular that people can recognize their team without the name on it. You don't see, you have to see a name. Or you have to see the colors, and they'll tell you which team that is, whether it's, it's baseball, basketball, football, hockey. Uh, but that protective gear goes with the identification of that uniform. And I remember my mother, uh, my first uniform that I can remember was my church uniform. My mom used to get up in the morning, get ready, make breakfast, and say, okay, now let's, let's put on our, our, uh, our clothes and get ready for church. It's dress-up Sunday. So we had this uh, a shirt, and a tie, and pants. We always had them to look presentable when we, we were going to church and dress up. And um, all I know is every Sunday, whether I liked it or not, I had to dress up. And usually not. So I, I wasn't one for dressing up. Uh, I could have gone to church in my holy jeans that I played with all day long in a shirt, but that wasn't going to happen in my house. And then when I worked in a grocery store, it's, it's funny, you don't think about it, but I worked at McCown's Market, and in McCown's Market, and worked for a great family, and uh, Ayers was the, was, the, was the boss, and, and Johnny was my, my uh, I'd call him his director, because he, he managed the store. But we all wore, uh, you know, we had to dress up a little bit, wear a tie, wear a shirt. didn't bother me, because I could wear jeans, I could wear whatever to work with, as long as I had my apron, and my name tag, and, and, and that was my uniform when I went to work there. Uh, and, it was, and that was fun. That was unique. And, and then I went and uh, decided to become a, an administrator at a college, and here in Barstow College, which I had a, a great experience with some great people and still do, I, uh, I had to wear a suit and tie or a sport coat and tie every Hey, I had to dress up. I hated it with a passion. And uh, I, I hated the fact that I wasn't with, uh, you know, athletes and on the field. And, and I had to wear this tie that I, I thought I was dying, choking every day. And it just didn't fit me right. And I remember one day I uh, decided to buy my, my little group uh, lunch. So I said, oh, don't worry, I'll, run, I'll go run and pick up. It was probably Del Taco and some drinks. And um, so I'm coming back, and I'm in this suit, and I'm in this tie, and I'm walking through the parking lot, and I have food in this tray and the f four drinks in this tray. And as I'm walking, they're, they're coming out to help grab the food. And those little parking blocks of cement, well, when you're carrying two trays in front of you, you really can't see it. 
man, I hit that thing and I flew forward. And I didn't worry about getting my suit dirty. I didn't worry about anything except, man, I'm not dropping these drinks. And I hit the ground like I was catching, laying out for a, a, a long pass. Hit the ground, didn't spill a drop. It hurt, didn't spill a drop. And I got up, and the first thing out of my mouth wasn't, oh, man, I got grass stains on my tie. And, and no, I was, didn't spill a drop. So uh, I was a little athletic even in that, that horrible uniform that I had to wear for that, that job. Um, I just wanted to wear a polo with the school logo on it, be comfortable, look presentable. But being an administrator called for a tie, so I did what I needed to do. I remember putting on my first baseball uniform. I was 10, 10 years old, Little League, and I, I think my uncle, Javier Gascon, uh, showed me how to put my, my sanitary socks I, uh, my stirrups and uh, the belt, the uniform, and I mean, I did figure out how to put the hat on, so that was pretty easy. Anyways, I, I wore that uniform with pride. When I, when I donned that yellow Civitan Club uniform, man, I was proud. I was, I was proud. Every uniform I've ever worn, or every team I've ever played on, but that uniform makes it special. And uh, that was baseball. But I also played football. And, uh, well, football's a little different. And I didn't start playing football until I actually got to high school in the 10th grade. And the reason I didn't play football was I didn't want to play football. I was a baseball guy. But because my Uncle Albert uh, was the first in the family to play football at San Pedro High, and I heard all the stories and uh, great stories. And then my cousins, you know, Pokey, uh, Tony, and, and Freddie played football. So at San Pedro High, that last name, at that time I was referred to as Algin. My last name was uh, just went together with football. But I was a baseball guy. And I remember the very first day of school, I'm in, I'm in line with 50 other guys in a PE class, standing at attention. Well, my coach, his name was Coach Thompson, I'll never forget. He walks down and calls your name out. You say, here, he goes down, and you're like a, a soldier, man. They got you lined up like, like you're in the Marines. And he came to me, and Algin, here, sir. He stopped, and he looked, and he goes, what are you doing here? He said, I'm in line. Just like everybody else. He goes, no, 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 no. You're not like everybody else. Your, your football uniform is waiting for you in the back. And I go, well, I didn't go out for football. I'm, I'm, he goes, uh, you, your football uniform is waiting for you in the back. So Coach Bill Satius came up to me and, and grabbed me. He goes, what are you doing in this line? You should have been out for football two weeks ago. We had hell week and, you know, you're late. And I go, uh wasn't planning on going out. He goes, come on, I'll get your uniform. I didn't have a choice because my family played and they were very successful and football was big. In San Pedro, I, I uh, well, I guess I had to go get my uniform. I remember vividly, first of all, I've never, I never played organized football. I'm going into the back locker room, he takes me into that room, he opens it up, and I'll tell you what, if you're not used to the smell of a locker room, wow, hits you right in the face. And so we go back there, and he starts digging through all these uniforms and pads. And, and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I don't know how to put it on. I don't know how to put a uniform on for football. He goes, what do you mean you don't know how to put a uniform on for football? I said, I don't know how to put a uniform on for football. So... He goes, well, these are your pants. You know how to put on pants, don't you? I go, yeah, coach, I know how to put on pants. And this is your jersey top. You know how to put that on? Yeah, coach, I know how to put that on. These are your shoulder pads. You go, okay, time out. Which way do they go on? And I don't know what the front looks like or the back. So he's sitting there like, I'm going to go be fitted for a tux. And he's putting the pads on, tightening the straps. Okay, these shoulder pads are perfect for you. He hits them a few times. 
then uh, then he goes, now these thigh pads, these thigh pads go right here so they protect your thighs from Charlie horses and stick them in the pads. Well, I stuck them in the pads and I stuck the knee pads in and I tied the, 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 the waist, the hip, the back. And I, I was thinking to myself, man, what do I got to wear all this stuff for? When I used to play in the street, I didn't wear anything. And then he goes, and, uh, you got a jock strap? I said, no, nah, I don't have a jock strap. And, uh, well, you need a cup and a jock strap. And you got cleats, you got this. And I said, I don't really have anything, coach. I uh, never played football. So helps me put my jersey tap top on. And I'm putting my pants on. And he pulls them up. And I go, oh, man, coach, this doesn't feel right. I had the thigh pads in backwards so that the points were both putting them together. So you could imagine when I pulled those up. I, uh, the tone of my voice went higher, I guess you could say, but I had to turn him around. I had him on backwards, and so he, uh, he looked at me and goes, you really don't have a clue, do you? I said, no, I don't have a clue. Well, I'll get used of it because this is your uniform. This is your protective uniform. And this is your uniform. Now you're proud to be a pirate, and uh, I, was proud. I was proud to be a pirate, but uh, as far as putting on a football uniform, that was a very interesting and uh, felt a little silly, but after a while I got used to it. And it was my protective gear and my uniform. So I started uh, this, this little message, and I go, you know, I think people need to understand when they look at sports, they only see the activity that's going on. They do not see the reality behind the sport. For instance, football, of course, is a, a physical uh, a game and protection is everything in football. But what about professional racers? Started reading up on 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 uh, NASCAR and and what what they wore and what they did and never thought about. I never thought about racing as being a sport uh, for the first part of my life. I just thought it was a bunch of guys that want to drive cars fast. Well, a lot more goes into it. There's a lot more money into it. Professional racers have to wear a re fire retardant suit, fire retardant underwear, fire retardant shoes, gloves to protect them from the fire, and there are a lot of fires. Certified helmet, heat shield on the bottom of their shoes, anchor points on the Hans device to reduce the risk of neck injuries and concussions. But because the the drivers racing against other drivers, and collisions are always a possibility. In fact, they happen a lot. The fall is also important. It's not like you're the football guy. You're running. That's your body. You're protected. Well, they've, they're protected with their body, but they also have to have the car. So the car has to have proper seats, proper seat belts, proper window nets, restrictor plates, roof flaps, window nets, safe barriers, pit road safety, and a spotter. I knew nothing about racing cars until I read that. I realized how big it was. And then, of course, there's baseball and softball, and I was fortunate enough to be able to coach both at the high school level and actually at the college level in both sports. And uh, you just think about the equipment, they all have their uniforms, but your equipment that they wear, they all, they all have to wear a helmet. They have to have a certified helmet, a safety helmet. So safety helmet, face mask now when you're at the plate. Um, of course, the catchers have protective gear. They have chest protectors, uh, shin protectors, and they have the protector that goes over the, the foot. They're wearing a face mask. They're wearing a little scully helmet. And, and then as of, well, I guess when Steve Yeager played, they have to have an attachment going from their, their face mask or have a face mask that covers their throat during the game. I guess a bat was cracked, and that part of that bat stuck in Steve Yeager's neck, and you know it almost killed him. Uh, so at that point, they had to figure out how to fix that and how to get some protective gear around that, that helmet. Um, ice hockey. Obviously, if you watch the ice hockey game, you wonder how some of those guys could move around. They're so padded up, uh, shin guards, mouth guards. And those mouth guards, they don't help. How many, how many interviews have you seen with hockey guys? They only got 
maybe seven teeth left in their mouth. But that, that's the nature of the sport. You know, shoulder pads, elbow pads. They call them ice pants, protective girdle, neck guard, gloves. And the goal, goalkeeper has a chest protector, leg pads, skates, and toe projection, blocker, catcher, and excuse me, hockey straps. I, I don't know. But, man, can you imagine trying to move around in that? Then, of course, when you look at football, you look at the helmets, you look at uh, all that's going on with in, in, the, in the lawsuits and in the medical journals about uh, concussions, helmets, eye shields, and the eye shields are not for the glare of the sun. The eye shields are for the fingers that go through the, the face guard, uh, rib protectors, shoulder pads, jock strap and cup, uh, hip pads, tail pads, thigh pads, knee pads, mouth guards, and gloves. And that is the protection that they have to have when they are in a sport. Well, and when you think about that protective gear, sports injuries, you, you think it would be minimal, but no, there's still, there's still a lot going on. So the gear helps. It can save lives in a lot of cases, but there are always injuries and sadly deaths in sports. Uh, some more than others. Some of the brutal sports, when they, they want to call this protective gear, but in boxing, uh, MMA, uh, some of those sports, those aren't, uh, those, you know, your gloves. They used to have bare knuckle fights in the past. Now now they got gloves that have to weigh so much. You, you know, there's not much protection in an MMA. There's not hardly any protection. But those are uh, the sports brutal sports, and, and those kinds of sports actually went on a long time ago, and a lot of you probably know of and, and heard about Christians being thrown to the lions, the gladiators. Um, that sport was to entertain people. So when we look at sports today, it's the same as to entertain people. Some are more brutal, some not. But injuries prevail in almost every sport that's played. Uh, from the major sport of, of, uh, of football and car racing now that I look at that, all the way down to ping pong, because you can pull a muscle. So every, every time you're playing a sport, there's some kind of injury tied to it. And um, what about our spiritual life? I go, we, we uh, Ephesians, Ephesians uh, 6.11 telling us to put on the whole armor of God. What does that really mean? Well, the whole armor of God. We're going to talk more about that next week. But, uh, but what I want to be able to stress about this is you have injuries in your spiritual life. Uh, you, you have someone that's, that's constantly on the prowl looking to bring you down. And his job, his goal his whole goal is to make sure that you end up in hell, and that you, you don't have that opportunity of going to heaven. So everything that Satan does, he, um, he does for his purpose. And that purpose is, you know, I'm not letting anybody go to heaven if I can help it. And he does it in various ways. And it, it tells you in the Bible, and Peter, that he prowls around like a lion. People look around you today. Uh, I usually don't uh, want to dwell on what's going on right now. I'd like to give a message of, you know, uh, of finding your way out of this, but not dwell on this. But I, as I look around and I try to stay off media as much as possible, I don't watch the news on TV because you can hear the same thing every day. And no matter what, whatever channel you turn it to, you can listen to your side of the story, and, and that's fine. Um, the more and more I think about it, the more and more I open my Bible. And I go, you know what? I want some answers. I want to know what could be done. Um, because it's been written. This book contains the history of uh, the human race from beginning to end. Most people don't want to pick it up because they're ashamed or embarrassed. And, I, and I, listen, I'm one of them. There have been times in my life when I know I should have picked the Bible up Headed for something I did and get on with my life, but I, I didn't want to do it. I was embarrassed. Um, from some of the little, there's times in my life where I was embarrassed 
to uh, pray before eating a meal in a restaurant. There was also, there were times, there was probably times I forgot, but there were times, I didn't, and, and there were times when I'd go to lunch with people who wanted to drink and have a great lunch, and then, you know, since, since I didn't drink much, uh, I was embarrassed to sit there and, and pray. So I've been through that. And I understand, I mean, you, you know what, you're, no one's perfect. We all sin. And the, but the point is, uh, when you're a believer, when you accept Christ as your personal Savior, you, you can get past that. All you do is ask for forgiveness, because if you belong to him, he promises to take care of you. You've you got to realize when things are wrong, you've got to step up, you've got to take responsibility, you've got to ask for forgiveness. And then you could look at what's going on around today in a different light. Uh, the fear, the unrest that people have, I mean, the hate that's going around, you can look at it differently. You can drive by an accident and say, hey, God, I hope that person's okay. And I used to be horrible on road rage, not that I'd ever get out and punch anybody. But, boy, when somebody cut me off or somebody's going 85 and a 50, first thing I did was look around to see if there was a policeman because they never get caught. And next thing I did was say, man, I wish that sucker, something would blow out a tire or if I could get my hands on that guy. And the more and more I read, the more and more I understand what, uh, what the Lord wants for my life. That guy goes past me and speeds or, oh, man, I cannot believe that. And in my mind, I'm saying, Lord, protect that guy. Protect the people he's going to be around. I never would have said that. I would, want, I would have wanted revenge. Um, so you have a whole different perspective on the world. First of all, you know how bad it is, but you also know that it tells you what's going to happen in the later days. And you just have to be conscious. You have to be conscious of people that are, are coming up and trying to sell you a bag of goods. A bag of goods... Um, could tell you, hey, if you do this, you'll be peaceful, you have no problem. We will always have problems from the day uh, Cain slew his, his brother, Abel. The world's never had unrest. And we've been, in a, we've been in an unrest environment the rest of our lives, and we always will be in it. We just don't have to be part of it. We can separate ourselves from that, and that's what we're talking about. So when we talk about the armor and the uniform, you're... I, I don't wear this with pride. I don't wear this shirt with pride. Les and I, th this is our video uniform, and when you see Les get up for his Bible study, you're going to see the same one. But we don't wear this for pride. We wear this for hope. This is the Lord. And it, just because it's on my, my shirt, and you read it, it's still in Scripture. This is the Lord, you know. And uh, he's given us the strength. He's given us... Uh, the strength to go on and carry on this battle. And, and uh, I thank him for that. And I, I thank him for putting me, uh, when I asked to be where he wanted me to be, I just thank him that he put me here. And, uh, and that's where true peace comes in. When you know you're in the Lord's will and you know you're doing what you want to do for him, then you have that peace. And, uh, and so this is our, our, this is our uniform. This is our, our, our hope. Our, our peace uniform. So, anyways, um, I'm going to close, and I want you to remember that next week we're going to finish this uniform thing. We're going to finish this equipment thing. We're going to talk about the whole armor of God. We're going to talk about each and every piece that protects us spiritually. And uh, we already know what protects us physically in different areas in different parts of our life. Now we're going to. We're going to talk about the spiritual war that everybody is fighting. Whether you believe in God or not, you're still in a war. You're still here on earth and you're still breathing. So let's close in a, a, a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for trying to introduce the first part, Lord, and, and getting to the most important part, and that's uh, the spiritual battle going on, and Lord, and, and taking up our... our, uh, our our gospel, the good news to everybody. Though that's our, our battles, Lord, is to, to share you and 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 you as in turn you protect us, and uh, you pr 
protect us with the, the various um, armor of God. And, and Lord, we'll, we'll go into that next week. And uh, Lord, I ask you to bless these people that are listening and share this gospel. Uh, and uh, Lord, just help me to get through this next week um, with the one focus of sharing your word and, and, uh, and living a godly life, Lord. And thank you for the opportunity that you give me that every time I do something wrong, I can actually look in the mirror and, and come to you, Lord, and know that you know, I'm a sinner. I'll never, be, I'll never be anything but a sinner saved by grace, Lord. And, and uh, that's okay because I'm going to end up uh, where I need to end up, Lord. And uh, I thank you for that. That's in your name. Amen. See you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you. The beating of my heart is deafening, but I'm still listening in the silence after the storm. Your voice will bring me home. I can hear you more than ever, taking me to a place that's better. With a hope that lasts forever. Pieces together, put the pieces together, put the pieces together, together.